remember things that you see that are interesting. Uh, don't always just keep your nose to the to the ground, look around you, and uh, remember the images. And this is what touches on what has come to be my take on surrealism in art, that it's not so much a thing as it is an idea, the way we look at the world. And uh, by definition, uh, surrealism is the depiction of the artist's psyche on canvas. Uh, and I think that that's, that's true, it's a very basic definition, but it's the way we see ourselves and the, and the way we see our uh, environment and uh, the projections that we have for things that are different in the world. Um, I have dreams occasionally of the paintings that were completely finished and uh, they never end up the same way if you start painting them, but uh, they come from that same sort of uh, approach that you try to uh, see the world and the different things that go on it, like looking at clouds and seeing that clouds change or looking at finding patterns in trees and uh, anything that you can see that makes the world a different sort of place because it is uh, there's a lot more going on than we allow ourselves to uh, to think that's what gives us a, gives us a heightened sense I call it a moment of uncommon perception when we see the world in a different way and uh, it can happen every day and in different ways and sometimes it can be the uh, shining of light on top of a rock that looks different than you've ever seen before uh, but it produces that uh, that sort of feeling that this is something that's different and you want to kind of record it or get it down. And I spent uh, about eight years painting Oregon landscapes simply because it uh, it was good practice it opened up my palette and it was you know people like landscapes and they, they can sell so there's a, uh, a very practical factor there uh, but I always went back to the uh, more surrealistic approach, things that I created from my own mind. And uh, I found that the uh, painting of landscapes helped because uh, since it did open up my color palette and everything, I, I applied it to the way I was working with my own ideas and, and the, the way I thought when I worked on the canvas. So that's pretty much where I, I am right now. I'm uh, getting back to some of the larger <laughs> paintings as you can see from this one it's 48 by 60. I had taken, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, I collect hundreds and hundreds of photographs. Generally I don't use them, I, I look at them, but you put them through your brain and you have a mental file cabinet so when you're looking at something on the canvas and you say I need to put something there that looks like it works, you could go filing through your, your brain for the image and the way it comes out will not be the photograph itself but your interpretation of it and you synthesize that material and make it work uh, with your painting. So I've used that uh, any, approach any number of times and I keep, sta I have stacks of photographs that I never look at but I did look at them once or twice <laughs> and the memory of them is in my, in my brain so I pull them out and since I think somewhat photographically it's kind of like producing your own photograph on an idea. And uh, I had the same thing happen with this fellow over here, which depicts uh, the Salilo Falls uh, event when the, that was called the last day uh, before the place was flooded, or the Bonneville Dam. And uh, took that fellow and put him in a different position. And uh, have, having been in the area where the falls are coming down, uh, still, in certain areas, I was able to uh, take that and uh, reproduce that on the canvas. Every painting is uh, an opportunity for exploration. I don't go with any set idea because I learn too much when I'm working on it. And uh, I find that if you're not paying attention to what's happening on the canvas, then you're not really painting, you're fighting against yourself. And uh, that allows me to uh, educate myself as I go. Each painting is a new experience and uh, that's the way I, I try to, it keeps it fresh since uh, I don't have any pre-planning that I, that I stay with it allows for pleasant occurrences to happen on a canvas. So when you're mixing your paints and you're working on a canvas sometimes you find you're, you're, you like what you see on the uh, uh, the mixing palette uh, better than what you're working on on the canvas. So I've, I've turned away from the canvas on occasion to work on palette paintings and I have a whole series of those. I will always have something to paint. That's, I, I don't understand 
uh, an artist who says, well, I, I really don't know what to paint right now. And, and I said, my gosh, how can that possibly be? I, in 20 lifetimes, I would never be able to get to a quarter of the things I've had ideas for. I have stacks of ideas uh, that I've written down. I call it visual shorthand. Uh, you know, I can look at it and see the movement of a, a pen or a pencil and recall what I was thinking when I saw that. And I keep hundreds and hundreds of those things. And I, occasionally I even use them. Sometimes they turn out to be decent little drawings, you know. So uh, you always keep stuff like that. The thing is, you're going to be about something or you're going to be something. And to be, you have to do. Um, a lot of people, they might like the idea of living the life or uh, uh, being around people who are creative or doing whatever, but they don't actually engage in it. There's some very interesting they're places bunnies. in the world where, <laughs> well, there's stone-like uh, sculptures that some, yeah. somebody might have put there. Uh, wow. Who knows? It's not a real place, but oh, then no. maybe it is. I don't know. I, I, like to <laughs> That's think, eerie. I like to think sometimes that I tap into places that exist somewhere. Yeah. Maybe we do. From down in uh, your French Glen, one of the houses, uh, an old homestead down to your fields, actually. It's the population seven. Yeah. The green. It's not a very populated area there. Uh, Cindy knows about that area. Yeah, by arrowheads. Well. Yeah, that's right. Interesting uh, landscape. And we have Mount Jefferson. A little thing that I had that I was working with called on, on stones. Uh, I have a different series called Working Stones, Standing Stones. Uh, people do a lot of, have done a lot of work with stones at a cultural level uh, over thousands of it's years. Like an Indian grinding. Yeah, something grinding. like that. Have fun with that. Every once in a while, these landscapes come out kind of the way you like, and this was one that I liked. Uh, there was something moving around in it. Um, and it's the way you use your brush. Uh, the way I, I paint a lot with my surreal work, uh, in, in a sense, is kind of referring to uh, people like John Singer Sargent, who really knew how to make the brushwork look like the object he was painting. Uh, so if you see the movement of a wave, the movement of your hand holding the brush last time. This is another palette painting, just one I created. Kind of a mountain-like escarpment and a plain in the distance. So I, I, one of the reasons I discovered, or how I discovered some of the principles of, of art, like composition, perspective, and the like, I learned it at an early age.